Now that we've created our FK controls, let's take a look at creating our IK controls. So I'm going to start by hiding the ARM FK layer. Let's turn on the ARM IK layer and let's temporarily hide these FK controllers. I'll just grab these two groups here and hit control H. So what we're going to do for the IK is actually going to be relatively simple. We just need to create an IK chain from the upper arm to the wrist. We need to create a controller to pair it that IK to, and then we just need to create a pull vector aim object for the elbow. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to come up here to skeleton, come down here to create IK handle, and we'll click from the shoulder. Oops, make sure I get the correct one there. There we go. Down to our wrist. Now, I would advise you not to go ahead and start moving this IK handle right away. You'll notice that it doesn't go to 000. It defaults with different translations. And if you move that and don't put it back immediately, it could be hard to put it back in its original position. So we're going to leave it as is and instead immediately move on to creating a controller. Now, I want to do something a little bit more elaborate than I've done before. I want to create a more three-dimensional looking controller. So what I'm going to do is come up here to create, polygons and create a cube. So I want something that'll be cube shaped, but I of course don't want it to be opaque or renderable. So what I can do is actually trace out this cube using a curve. I'll come up here to create, down to curve tools and choose EP curve. I'll choose the option box and make sure it's set to linear. And then I can hold the V key to snap. And so I'll just click on each one of the vertices here and kind of just trace this out. Now, don't worry if you have to go back over the same line twice. That's not going to actually affect anything. We're just going to come all the way around here. Let's go around to the other side. Let's get that part traced over. And it looks like we just have this line down here to finish. There we go. I'll hit enter. I can now select the cube and delete it. And what I'm left with is a three dimensional looking curve. I'll go ahead and say modify and center pivot and let's go ahead and snap this over to the wrist. Just drag that right over. There we go. So I'm going to go ahead and change the size of this to better match his wrist. So perhaps I'm going to go ahead and make it a little bit wider here. There we go. And I'm going to temporarily rotate it just to get an idea of how it's going to look. Well, let's see. I think I kind of like it, but I want it to be maybe a little bit wider like that. And then we're actually going to go ahead and squish it down. So I want it to look like it's pretty obviously his wrist, but not necessarily controlling the hand. Okay, I like that. I'm going to go ahead and put its rotations back to zero. There we go. And what I can do is already clone this over to the other side. I'm going to go ahead and hide my proxy geometry, hit control D to copy that, and we'll snap that over. So just like before, I'm going to go ahead and grab both of these and let's freeze out the transforms, modify freeze transformations. We can also kill the history, edit, delete by type history. And now I'm going to group each one so they can rotate it into the proper position and keep that nice 000 value. So we'll go ahead and group this one and we'll group this one. There we go. Let's grab this first group and let's kind of rotate it into position. I'm going to make sure I can see the geometry while I do this. So let's grab our rotate tool and actually I forgot to center the pivot on my group. So let's do that really quickly. Modify center pivot and we'll rotate it into position. So rotating this way, it looks like it'll be about negative 45 degrees. I think that's okay. I want maybe a little bit more. So about maybe negative 50. I'm going to try to keep this at whole numbers so it's easier to remember for the other side. And when we look at this angle here, I probably want to rotate it up a little bit this way. So about negative 9 degrees. Okay, I think I'm relatively happy with that. Let's go ahead and do the same on the other side. So it'll be negative 9 and negative 50. So we'll go ahead and grab here, select the group, center the pivot right there. So it's going to be positive 50 now on the rotate Z. And let's go ahead and do negative 9 on the rotate Y. Actually, whoops, that's going to be positive 9. There we go. So those are both now in position. So now I can go ahead and parent my IK handle to this controller. So I'll grab the IK handle. We'll hold Shift, select our controller, and hit P. And now we'll be able to actually move this around. And you can see the arm will come with it. And I can always zero it back out to its original position.
Let's go ahead and do the same thing on the other side. I haven't created my IK here yet, so let's go ahead and do that. We'll come up here to Skeleton, IK Handle. Let's go ahead and start up here. I'll undo and make sure I get the right joint. It's sometimes a little tedious when they're right on top of each other there. There we go. And we'll go ahead and bring that down to the wrist. Okay. So again, I can take this handle here and parent it directly to this controller. Hold Shift, select that controller, and hit P. Okay, let's test that one out. And that works as well. All right, so now what I want to do is name these objects. That's going to be the group, the curve, and the IK handle for both arms. So I'm going to go ahead and pause while I do that. All right, those have been renamed. You can see this is the left arm IK group, the left arm IK control, and the left arm IK. And I've done the same for the right side. So now let's go ahead and create our elbow controllers. Those are going to be pretty simple. I'm just going to create a NURB circle. I'm going to go ahead and hide my proxy layer, and I'm going to snap that to this joint that's higher up on the elbow. This typically works better with whatever joint is further out. So we'll snap that one to there. Let's go ahead and shrink it down a bit. I'm going to go ahead and rotate it 90 degrees right there. There we go. And what I want to do is drag it back just a little bit. Let's go ahead and show my geometry so I can see how far back it needs to go. All right, I'm going to go ahead and maybe rotate it a little bit. And I think that should work just fine. So what I want to do is freeze the transforms on it, freeze transformations. I'm going to go ahead and hide my proxy geo layer. And I'm going to go ahead and move its pivot back onto this joint. There we go. So I'm going to go ahead and duplicate this to the other side. I'm going to go ahead and hit Control D to duplicate it, Control G to group it. Then I'm going to take that group and give it a scale negative 1 in the X. There we go. I'll go ahead and ungroup it, edit, ungroup. And now I have the controller on the exact opposite side. I'm just going to go ahead and freeze out its transforms. So I'm just going to check to make sure it is snapped correctly. I can always kind of drag it and re-snap it just in case. And that looks like it's all correct. All right, so now let's go ahead and create these as pull vectors. So driver is going to be the controller. The driven is going to be the IK. And we'll come up here to constrain and choose pull vector. And then we'll do the same on the other side. The driver is the controller. The driven is the IK handle. Constrain and pull vector. We can quickly test that out if I go ahead and move this away move it up and down, we could see the elbow is going to point towards that and even try it along with this controller here. Okay, that works great. We'll go ahead and zero this back out and let's go ahead and zero this one back out. All right, there we go. So all we have left to do now is take care of the shoulders. I want these joints to move along with the shoulders when it moves up and down so we can do exactly what we did with our FK controls. I'm going to go ahead and choose this larger joint as the driver and this smaller joint as the driven and we're only going to constrain the translation so we don't want to lock away our rotations so driver driven constrain and we'll go to parent and make sure it's translations only there we go and we'll do the same on the other side the big one's the driver smaller one is the driven and we'll go ahead and hit apply and now you can see when i rotate this joint the arm is going to move along with it. You can see it is pulling away down here, but that's because it's just too far away. Once I move this controller back, you can see it'll snap back into position. All right, I'm going to go ahead and zero the rotation back out here. And that's it. We've created the basic IK control setup that we need. Now that we have the FK created and the IK created, we can go ahead and begin adding these together and having them control our result joints. We'll start doing that in the next clip.